broken now i see you were breaking me and growing inside of me standing in your presence lord i can see you digging all my roots up i see you healing all my wounds up all i can say is hallelujah look what you've done look what you've done in me you spoke god's truth into
Well, good morning, Central Christian Church. How's everybody doing today? I hope everyone is staying cool, trying to during the summer months. We're glad you all are here to worship with us today. If you're joining us online, we're glad you're joining us as well. Let's all stand and let's join our voices together and sing this out. With just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. And just one word, the darkness has to retreat. With just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can move. I praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you heal what's broken inside me. Just one word. Out. I will believe in greater things. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree, there's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree, there's no power like His power, there's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Oh, there's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall he can break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Central, you can stay standing, and I, what I want you to do is say hi to someone right now. Yes, greet each other, greet each other right now. 
And while you guys do that, I do want to welcome you. want to welcome every single one of you to Central Christian Church, where we're letting God love us, but at the same time, we're letting God love others through us. That's what we're all about here at Central. That's uh, our mission statement here. It's so good to see all of you this morning. I know it's a little hot out there. It's Texas. Get used to it. It's just going to get hotter. You know, but it's, it's beautiful. You know, God created a new day, a new opportunity to worship his name, a new opportunity for his blessings on your life, a new opportunity for you to sing to him, a new opportunity to worship him, a new opportunity to say thanks for everything he's doing in your life. What I want to remind you here right now is, I don't know what you're going through right now, but I know in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 57, Paul talks about how we all have a victory in Jesus his name right so I don't know what you're going through but just know that you can overcome that not because of what you can do but on what Jesus can do because there's nothing nothing that he can do because he's great he's an amazing God so once again it's good to see all of you this morning let's get ready to continue worshiping with that heart of thanksgiving because we serve a big big God so good to see you and let's keep worshiping I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roll Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. Raise a hallelujah Fear you lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated
raise a hallelujah. I'd raise a hallelujah. I'd raise a hallelujah. Christ is my firm foundation. Well, Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad than I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never my firm foundation he's the rock on which i stand when everything around me is shaken such a privilege to be up here. It's an honor to lead you guys through prayer. And I love how every time I do this, the journey for where I started to where I'm up here now in lead you is during the week, I had different thoughts in my head. I had thoughts, well, maybe I address, I address doubt. And then I was thinking, well, maybe not. Then I maybe about complacency. And I moved on and then I started thinking about what's going on around us. And we see all the storms, the weather, my daughter's, Tulsa, she had that power for three days. Last, last weekend, I drove out to Gilmer and saw just devastation. We've seen um, just a lot of different things going on. We've, the whole world deal with Russia and, and Ukraine, it's just all these different events got me thinking, you know, this, a lot of people could doubt God and they question it. And it's like, that's not the time to do it. And then last night he hit me on the head and says, hey, dummy, 
you got to go with Psalms 23. I said, okay. So so I'm going to just pray through Psalms 23. And we'll go from there. If I get my phone to work. Oh, really? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path with his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's continue as we sing this. Rain came, wind blew, but my house was built on you. stand and sing that chorus again. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. I think one of the hardest things about living in the world that we do right now is that there is so much around us that we see and experience every day that often uh, we get so captured by what's happening here on earth in the present that we forget what's coming in the future. 
And as we were uh, putting together this service, I was uh, drawn to uh, John's revelation. As we come to the end of his book, he writes these words, and I ask you to let these uh, words of what is coming encourage us today. John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Well, how I long to breathe the air of heaven, where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity.
Father, we thank you for that promise. We look forward to that day. And in the meantime, our prayer is that you would find us faithful, that we would seek to honor you with our lives each and every day. Open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds now as we feed on your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all may be seated and our children can be dismissed for their lesson time. Go with them. <laughs> Don't you? Today we want to talk about influence. Hmm. Are you an influential person? Huh. Okay. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's go back and get a little history first. There's something that most of us are quite familiar with. In fact, probably all of us are familiar with. It's part of our everyday life. You know, I didn't understand all of it, but it was created with fabric by using a twill weave weft passing under the warp threads. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand that, and I truly trust a seamstress might. The bottom line is we got denim. Yay! Yay! Created in France. So, wow, how wonderful denim. And so then it was shipped to the United States, and this was in the 1880s, the 1890s. Wonderful fabric. Levi Strauss had moved his company to the West Coast. And he was out there, and mainly he was making tents and making uh, wagon covers, other things like that. Well, another gentleman came to him by the name of Mr. Clark. He said, you know, I got an idea. Let's make overalls. And between the two of them, they came together and put the rivet in your clothes. <laughs> rivet in the jean. It's patented, just in case you didn't know. Okay, I wasn't cool in college. My wife had no problems telling me that. I didn't wear Levi's. I wore Wrangler. <laughs> I wore Lee. I wore what fit. But I was uncool because I didn't have the Levi. I didn't have the button-up pants. That's how they came out. And it was so much later that even Levi put a zipper in. Levi or jeans have captured the world. Now, um, they started out just making the overalls, and then they came in and started making just the jeans. But they have gone everywhere. And it was very interesting that during certain periods in our history, only certain people could get them. First of all, they were designed for the miners. They were blue because they didn't show the dirt as bad. And you could wear them a little bit longer, and they did. Now, I don't know what's in your mind, but as a young child, mom and dad every September would go buy me new jeans. Okay. The first two weeks of school, I came home with blue legs. Okay? <laughs> Sweated, and the dye came out. Okay? You, wow. The other thing that, if you'll remember, when jeans first came out, they were shrink to fit. 
You bought a size bigger because when you washed them, they would shrink. And so you see how all of this started. And we see how just a, a pair of jeans have gone through years. Now you got pre-washed, okay, stone-washed. Okay, now you buy your jeans already ripped. I mean, that was a badge of honor that we finally got ripped jeans. But can you see then from a fabric to a piece of clothing, it is international. It was taken more international by our GIs in the war. They took them over. Once again, it was said that they, only they can have them. Levi has been pretty influential. People take them, and then you had the hippie movement where they did the bell bobs, bell bottoms. Oh. <laughs> then, of all things, they put diamonds and other type glossy things on them. And they wore them. You had the hip huggers. You had this. You had that. But it was the basic gene that started, and that influence sparked other opportunities for investors to look and say, man, I can take this product. Look what we can do with it. What a job it has done. There was a church in the New Testament that had significant influence, the church of Ephesus had tremendous, tremendous influence. Paul had come there. Uh, it is uh, thought that John and Jesus' mother wound up residing there. Uh, I don't know what else you remember. I remember the Temple of Diana. I remember when the people became, uh, became Christians. They brought their books, their spiritual Satan books, all in town, and they had a, a book burning. There was a kid, there were some people with an evil spirit, and they came up and started threatening him. And, and, you know, they said, hey, look, I know Paul. I know this. I have no clue who you are. And they were sent out and destroyed a lot of things happened. The influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character and development or behavior or someone or something or the effect itself. What influences you the most? One of the books long time ago, it was in the 50s, then it was in the 60s. Uh, it was written by a man by Vance Packard. His book was Hidden Persuaders. It's a very interesting book just about marketing, of how we are led by marketing. He talked in this one thing about this uh, laundry soap. Okay. Same laundry soap. Put some in a yellow basket, some in a blue box, and some in a yellow and blue box. And gave it to different people. Went out after they had had it for a week or two and asked them. And the lady with the yellow said, oh man, it's the greatest thing ever. The persons with the blue said it's the worst thing ever. How? Would you ever market or have a product like this? The one that came down here with the blue and yellow just said, eh, it's not any different. And yet all the soaps were exactly the same. Television influences us. Newspapers, car dealers, everything that we and our senses, first of all, our parents influenced us. Our genetic makeup influenced us. Our parents 
influence us. The culture in which we lived influence. Okay. I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Okay. Proud to be there. My wife was born and raised in Crane, Texas. Houston's a city of much more than a million. Crane's a, top, a population of less than 2,000. Was there a cultural difference? Yes. <laughs> so all of these things influence us. The church of Ephesus became a strong influence in the word of God going out and spreading God's word. However, there came a point in their history, eh, they just kind of began to wean and wane away. They weren't nearly as effective as they were. And we learned this in Revelation. Revelation, the second, or the, yeah, the second chapter, the uh, angel, re- it's turning on me. All right. And it says to the angel in the church of Ephesus, write, these are the words of him who holds the seven candles in the right hand and walks among the seven candle lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles and aren't, but have found them false. You have persevered and you have endured hardships for my name and for my glory. However, I have this one thing against you, that you have forsaken the first love. Consider how far you have fallen. I think it's very important today as we look at churches, as we look at the relationship, how much have we lost our first love? Remember the enthusiasm that you had when you got married. Do you still have that same enthusiasm? What about when you had your kids? There was a great enthusiasm. There was parties. There were showers. There were all kinds of things. And oh, man, adolescence, eh, not so much. What about your church life? Has church become more of an obligation and business? I, th- I think it can be. I go because I'm required to go. We get, we get into PTA, we get into Little League Baseball, we get into Little League Soccer, we get into this, we get into that, and we go in with enthusiasm and all of a sudden we are completely overwhelmed. And the things that we are doing no longer come from our heart and the love that we have. It becomes an obligation, and that is what the angel's saying there to the church in Ephesus. It's saying you've lost your first love. Get it back. Get it back so things can happen. Get it back. Get that motivation. Get that excitement back. Do things. I want to remind us, how many grew up in Sunday school Well, you got to raise your finger. I look at all of the uh, sports figures or whatever. If they make a touchdown, they do. They're pointing to God. Mm. All I think of, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. See, I don't sing good, but you remember. This little light of mine... I'm going to let it shine. And what does the song say? Hide it under a bushel? No. Okay. I think there's times in our lives that we have just gotten burdened down and have lost 
our influence. I know each and every one of us has influence. And if you say you don't, I want to read something to you that I got. It's very humbling. My nephew yesterday just graduated from OU Medical School as a doctor, MD, medical doctor. And my sister wrote to me, and she says, I think you need to know this. And I said, what? And she said, when he applied for his residency, he had to write something about himself. And he wrote this. Uncle Mike had a quadruple cardiac bypass surgery at the age of 42. I was 10. So I was shielded from a lot of the fear and the details of his care, but I do remember that my mother and my aunt were scared. They were not certain that he would be okay. He did recover from surgery and went on to become a critical care nurse. I had no idea. I had no idea. The influence you have with your children God has called you to be an influencer in your community. Hey, in your driving, okay? In your relationships and business, God has called you to be an influencer, to let your light shine. I think some of the words that he left us with and go into all the world and preach the gospel... Wait a minute. We were not just supposed to sit here? He said, go, go, go. And we need to be, have that fire just built under our tush. We have a missions committee. We have opportunities for outreach. Take them. God is looking at what we as our congregation you as an individual are doing. I sure don't want to be like the church of Ephesus where the angel came and said, you know, get it straight. I'm going to take your candle away. We have been given a warning. We've been given an opportunity. You have been educated and are continually educated. Do not miss the men's chat group. Do not miss the life groups. Do not miss Sunday morning Bible study. You are being given tools to do what you need to do, to be influential. The question comes today is, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? God, through his son, gave his life. I think he did quite a bit. You know, every, I, I was reading something the other day that all the costs are going up. Salvation's still free. And he still wants you. And through the Holy Spirit, through the filling of the Holy Spirit, through the sanctification that comes from God, we can get that fire. We can get that fire. Does anybody here this morning have a smile? I still want to come up here one time with a mirror. I want to preach behind the mirror and let you look at each other. God has blessed us. God has commissioned us. If the worship team wants to come on, what are you going to do with it? He says, come. And then he says, go. Go, go as you are, wherever you are, go, share the good news of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you uh, for various influences that come through our life. Hey, it may only be a, a pair of jeans, but it influences us. It may only be a teacher in school or a neighbor. It may only be a Sunday school teacher or anyone who has touched us. We are being watched. 
Father, help us to be like you and live the life that you have called us to live. In Christ's name, amen. you would please stand and worship with us now. Thank you so much. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. my voice and let me sing always solely for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from me take my silver and my gold now my good I will hold take my intellect and use every power as you choose Here am I Hold me Take my love It's all for thee Take my will and make it thine It shall be no longer Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour, at your feet is treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. As a child, because this is a, an old hymn, the words that we just sang were written 150 years ago. And my mom always said, it's not take my life and let it be. It's take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. So I thought about what does consecration mean? How does God do that? And I think he does that through our worship, which, as Mike said, is not just on Sunday morning. It's every day. I think he does that when we surrender to him. So I've got a couple of scriptures I'd like to read. In Romans 12, Paul says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we surrender ourselves to him, when we let him consecrate us to his service, 
we're, we're, we're acting like Isaiah in, the war, in, in Isaiah 6 when he saw God on the throne and he said, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Today, we ask God to take our lives and use them for his glory. We don't want to copy what the world does, but we want to be the new people that God wants us to be. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today in surrender and in worship of who you are and how you have changed us. We know that we fall short. And so we ask you to forgive us when we do. But we also know that when we fall short, sometimes you can use that still for your glory. And that's what we're asking, is that you take us and use us for you, for your glory, for your kingdom. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
Awesome. It was great to see all of you this morning here at Centro, where we're letting God love us, but at the same time, we're letting God love others through us. That's what we're all about here at Centro. And as you know, if you've been here with us for the past four or five weeks, we've been going through a series, Faith in Action, about our mission, vision, and values of pretty much who we are as a church or who we want to be as a church. And of course, the first couple of weeks, we looked into our mission statement of letting God love us, letting God love others through us. Then Phil was here and we talked about becoming passionate followers of Jesus. We talked about how we want to become a risk-taking church. Uh, last Sunday, we talked about how we want to become a multi-ethnic, a multi-generational church because we want to reflect not just how our community looks, but how heaven is going to look one day. Uh, that's the whole goal, right? Of We just want to reflect how it's going to be looking up there. Uh, and, and today, uh, Mike talked about how we want to become an influential not just followers of Christ, but a church as a whole. Uh, that's who we want to be. That's our vision of who we want to become as a church. And next week, uh, Mike is wrapping um, our series with our values of who we, we are, our DNA of, of certain attitudes that we want to have as followers of Christ and as members of Central Christian Church. So make sure to, to be here for that uh, because it's, it's going to be a good one as we wrap up this, this series of faith in action about our mission, vision, and values. And news with that, we're starting a new series on the book of Ephesians uh, for six weeks. We're going to be going through, uh, diving deeper into the teachings of Paul there uh, to the church of Ephesians. I know Mike touched a little bit about the church of Ephesus. And the cool thing is we have ordered a uh, journal for each one of you that has a book of Ephesians. So you, you're going to be able to write notes, write all of your personal stuff in there with Ephesians. So make sure you come for that, come for the first week because Every single one of you is going to get a free journal with Ephesians in there. So make sure you invite your friends, invite coworkers, because we have enough for everyone. And we would love to see you for those six weeks. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, right now I'm going to ask the team that is going to Guatemala to come up front. As you know, we are leaving next Sunday. Um, yeah, yeah. We are living next Sunday, and I know we're still missing a couple more people. Uh, and we're just getting ready to be an influential group of people, right? Uh, what Mike talked about. Uh, that's, that's who we want to become. And this is just a little part of, of who we, who, what we do. So I'm going to ask Mike to come over here and um, ask him to, to pray for us, to take care of our going out and our coming in. As Psalms 121 says, we, we have that, that trust in him, and we will, you know, hang into that promise. So, Mike, take it away. Father God, we as Central Christian Church commission each and every one of these to be ambassadors for you, for our congregation to go to Guatemala, to minister to the people that are there. Give them the words to say. May their hearts be received by those that, that are there, that you might be glorified. May their, sh um, may their uh, transportation, may their travel be safe May they be healthy and return to us with great stories of how you have worked through each and every one of their lives, but also the lives that they were able to touch. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. So, yeah, this will be part of the group. There's also a church in Atlanta that's going to be joining us uh, down in Guatemala, so it's going to be a great time. So now I'm going to ask you to stand up as we close uh, this service, as we've been doing for the past couple of months. We're going to read this verse all together, and I just want you to, to take it in, to, to actually believe what this verse is saying, because as you know, like I like to say, we too worship and serve a big a big God, right? So if he's so, so big, we can dream big things and for, for the church, for your life, and he can do big things in your life. So let's go ahead and read this all together at the count of three. One, two, 
3. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of work within us, <clears throat> to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Church, have a great week and don't forget to let God love others through you. I will believe for greater things there's no power like the power of jesus let faith arise let all agree there's no power like the power of jesus i will believe for greater things there's no power like the power of jesus let faith arise let all agree there's no power power there's nothing that our god can't do there's not a mountain that he can move oh praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that our god can't do oh there's nothing that our god can't do there's not a prison wall that can't break Have a great day.